Okay, so this is a tutorial on how to get uh, logic working with reason. The first thing I want you to do though is open up your uh, your maestro, Apogee Maestro. Uh, mine looks different than yours and uh, you know in addition to that I'm also, I, my duet's not plugged in right now because I'm recording through the computer. Uh, so it looks a little different but essentially what you want to find is the, in the settings uh, you know, there's two options. You can set it to be, or three options, I guess. You can set it to be the internal mic. That's the one that's inside of the Apogee. You don't want that. There's also external mic. You do want that, but you want the external mic with 48 volts. So that's the phantom power. So make sure you set that up so that it's receiving information from the mic set at 48 volts. Uh, if you're not sure how to do this in the settings, check Apogee's website or just call me and I'll guide you through it. Uh, it's really easy to do that part. Uh, so set that part up once once you've, you're all set and you've got external mic at 48 volts in the Apogee settings. Let's load up Logic. And uh, you can't see the menu at the top here, but where it says Logic Pro right next to the Apple, you drop down and you should be able to see this Preferences menu. You go from Preferences to Audio, and in this box, uh, you'll have the output device and input device. Both of these should be set to the Apogee one. So I have Duet here with um, these parentheses. If you have a parentheses, it means that the system can't find that interface. Uh, now it can't find my Duet because it's, my Duet's unplugged. But uh, you should be able to see the one here without parentheses. Select both for input and output device, and also change this rewire behavior to live mode. That just makes it run a little faster and makes it a little more responsive. Okay, so once we're good with the changes, you're going to apply changes down here, and let's open up a new track in Logic. I really feel like one of those YouTube guys right now because uh, they all, for some reason, they all have colds when they're giving tutorials. I don't know why. Anyways, uh, so we have uh, our new tracks here. Uh, I'm just going to load up maybe four tracks, just just a guess. At mono, or these are all mono tracks, uh, and that's just for recording in Logic. That's just our our you know audio or singing, whatever, I don't know, whatever, you might have less tracks, I don't know how many, if you're just doing a vocal in, in Logic, then whatever. Uh, the first thing we want to bring up here is the mixer, and uh, the mixer has all of your tracks loaded up properly, okay? So, uh, the, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Reason. Now remember, you always open Reason after you open Logic if you want them to work in tandem, and you'll see that uh, reason comes up as rewire slave mode. That's what you want. That's good. Now the audio settings in this don't mess with them. You know when you when you have it in slave mode. Uh, if you have it in, if you just open reason normally, then you'll have to mess around with the settings to get it to read your particular uh, devices. But this, uh, if it's in slave mode, it's following whatever you've set up in Logic. So make sure you do that first, like we discussed. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating a device. Uh, let's create a redrum. And let's also create a uh, subtractor analog synth. Uh, this will give me a good demo to show you how to connect things up both in stereo and in mono. If I hit the tab key on my keyboard, just on my computer keyboard, it flips around to the back. And you'll notice that the redrum has these left and right, these stereo outputs that go into tra uh, one and two on this uh, main device here. Like we discussed, you want to move these to three and four because one and two aren't counted when they're uh, when you're connecting and rewiring. Those are like the main, the entire signal gets put out through there. So three and four, and we notice down here the subtractor only has one output. It doesn't have a stereo like this one, so that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this main output and put it into output five. We'll leave output six empty, uh, but this is mono, so you can't do it any other way. You have to put it in through five. So great. So that's our setup and reason. Now we'll go back to logic. Now to connect the two, we'll go to the options, go to create new auxiliary channel strips. We're going to create two channel strips for what we just did. The first one is going to be stereo because remember, remember that these are two cables, left and right, that's stereo, going into these two spaces. So I'm going to hit stereo, I'm going to go to reason, I'm going to go to three and four, I'm going to create it. For the net other one we created, the mono one, I'm going to go into here and select mono this time instead of stereo. And of course it's channel 5, so I'm going to go to channel 5. Why is it channel 5? 
Remember, that's where we put this wire. We went from main to channel 5 here. This is a mono signal. It's not stereo, so that's why we did that. So here we have our two uh, faders, and we should be able to see when we start hitting a drum here that there is a signal, sure enough, coming through. And the same thing if you were to plug in a controller, you would be able to create sounds from this. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, another thing to remind you of is if you create, if you say you have a bunch of them set up in stereo and you want to create multiple tracks, if you put in four here, that will automatically count up. It'll be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, as high as you want to go. And yeah, that's it. I hope that was helpful. I'm sorry for my crazy congestedness. Hopefully that'll be gone in a couple days. Okay, uh, good luck. And feel free to call if you have questions.